Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover storing user preferences both as a logged out user, uh, so like a cookie storage situation where maybe you click on like the newest for sorting and now you see the newest post first and then if you refresh, of course we still have our parameters up here, but if we get rid of these parameters, it still stays on the newest ordering here. Uh, then if you sign up, I'll say like video at example.com give it a password of password and I'm actually going to copy this. If I sign up with this, you can see we're still sorting by newest because we've maintained those preferences from the logged out session. But now if we log out, we don't have those preferences anymore because we clear them after sign up. The other thing is when we log out, we clear the preferences because for me personally, if I log out, I generally associate that with like an incognito window where I expect it to be like what the default experience is when I come to an application. So for me, it's always weird when I log out and some of my preferences are still being persisted. That said, uh, we can also come in here and we can now sign in. Uh, actually, let me go over to oldest here. I'll leave it on oldest. We can now sign in with video at example.com. We'll log in. We can see they're still sorting by newest. We can then go ahead and log out and see that this is still set to oldest. Okay, so all of this is happening with device users, of course. So let's go ahead and let's just do this. To get started, we'll go ahead, we'll CD out of here and do a Rails new video. And then we'll go ahead, we'll CD into that video project and we'll uh, open it with a code dot. Now, just like other videos we've done this week, and recently, uh, we are gonna be overriding the device controllers for this. So we have the sessions and the registrations controller that we've, of course, uh, overridden quite a few times. And we're also gonna be playing with the cookies and rails, which is good, because that's some experience we probably don't have too much of if the only thing you watch is my tutorials. And also, you know, if you're only watching my tutorials, I do, I do apologize. Uh, but okay, let's go ahead and let's do a bundle add for device and the faker gem. We're adding device to, of course, have user accounts and the faker gem because we need to seed some post data because uh, I don't feel like typing 25 posts in to sort and search through. But okay, that takes care of the device portion. Now for our uh, scaffold, we'll do a Rails G scaffold for a post. Uh, we'll do a post with a title and a body of type text. All of that other stuff isn't necessary. So that gives us that. We're going to be sorting by the created or the ID order. So we don't have to worry about adding anything else there. And now we need to add uh, preferences. So for this, we'll say Rails G model. We'll call it preferences. Oops, uh, preferences, hopefully. Preferences, there we go. With a uh, string for the post order. Now, you could add more to this over time, just generate more migrations. Uh, but the main things you're going to want here are whatever your first preference are or first preference is, and then a user colon references. But as of right now, because we don't have the device set up yet, we don't want to run this migration. So we're actually going to cancel out of this and we'll do a Rails G device colon install command to install device real quick. And then we can do a Rails G device user command to do this. Now, when we run this migration or this, when we create this model, we have that user to reference and we should be good to go. But let's say you run this and then you realize, oh, I didn't do the user migration yet. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. Just hit the up arrow key, come back here and change this G to a D. And then you can go ahead and destroy the model just as easily as you created it. I'm gonna go ahead and create this again though, because we actually wanna keep this. And then I'll do a Rails DB call and migrate command to migrate our database. Next, let's come over to our DB and then we'll come into our seeds file. Now, I'm not gonna go over the seeds here. This is pretty standard stuff at this point. We just create 25 posts, give them a title and a body using Faker, and that's pretty much it. At this point, we can then come over to our terminal again and do a Rails DB colon seed command to seed our database. Should take maybe two or three seconds, then we're good to go there. Next, we need to do a Rails G uh, device colon controllers for the user's controllers to generate all of our device uh, controllers for us. Now let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S to start our server. And then let's come over here and let's close this. Now let's come into our config and our routes.rb. In our routes, we want to add the uh, device controllers real quick, which is gonna look like this. We just add a comma after users, controllers, create a block, pass in the sessions controller, which in my case, I called it users uh, plural. So my controllers folder has a users plural in it. So it's users slash sessions and uh, users slash registrations respectively. Finally, we just wanna create a route that goes to the post controller and the index action. 
that takes care of that. So now we actually want to set this up. The first thing that I think we should do is come into our index page. Uh, let's come into our views, our posts, and actually let's come into our post partial real quick uh, because I forgot to do this while I was testing and it just made my life so much easier. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add in the ID here so that we can track which post was created when. Then let's come into our index page. In our index page, we want to create a quick little form and this is gonna be for our select tag. So we'll do this up here above our post header, just like this. And then we'll say, all right, for this, we need to create a select tag for the preference, just like this. Then for the uh, select tag, we need some options for select, which is a really fancy way of saying we need this ugly block of code right here. So it takes in a options for select inside of some parentheses. It then has an array and then it has whatever your default selected value is. In our array, it's just the options. So in this case, whatever the user sees will be capital N newest, and then we'll pass lowercase newest to the back end. We could also just pass back a zero and a one if we wanted to here, uh, but in my case, I just went with this. This is just whatever we're gonna be using in the back end to check whatever the, the user's preference is. Then we have the default selected, which we'll have to set from the controller. And then after that, we want to say, all right, look, uh, this is great, but we don't want to have to hit submit every time we select something. So let's give this an on change, which just calls this.form.submit to submit this entire form whenever you ch uh, change your selection. Next, we need to come below our posts here and let's just do a, uh, I didn't actually do this in my version, but we'll do this real quick. Let's render a shared slash uh, sessions, I guess. Uh, just like that. And then let's come over to our views, right click new folder, call this shared. And then in here, let's right click new file underscore sessions.html.erb. And in here, we're gonna create a couple of things. It's a link to the sign out and the edit profile. And then it's also a link to sign up and sign in. Again, because we're using Rails 7, our logout link now needs to be a data turbo method delete instead of the old, uh, uh, what was it? Method colon colon delete. We don't have to do this section right here anymore. We just need to make sure we have this data. That takes care of that. It lets our index page look a little bit more readable, although we should probably abstract this into a form as well for the select tag, but I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. Okay, now let's come into our post controller because we have to kind of configure a post controller before this will even work. So what we want to do in here is we want to say, all right, we need to uh, start by setting this default selected. So what we're gonna do is instead of doing the post.all, we're gonna do a post.order, and we're gonna order by, by the created at based on a preference order, which means we have to define what that preference order is. We also have to do a default selected, which we'll just say is equal to get preference, and we pass in the post order. Now for both of these, we're just gonna come down to the bottom of our page here for, uh, for these things. So down here in our private section, we're gonna have a preference order. The preference order is just gonna be a quick little check. It says preference equals get preference for the post order. Again, we're using that here and we're also using it up here. So that's where we're actually gonna grab it. And then we're gonna say, all right, our preference, if it's equal to oldest, we'll set the order to ascending. Otherwise we'll set it to descending. Not the cleanest way to do it, but you know, for the sake of sorting 25 posts, it's a, it's a good enough example. Now below this, we need to create our get preference. Now our get preference is gonna take in a key. The reason why we're making this take in a key is because I was like, all right, what happens if you have like multiple preferences? We want this all to be like a little bit expandable. So maybe you take this and you abstract this out into its own helper or something in the future. So it takes in a key, which in our case is just the symbol for the post order. And then it says current user dot preference, which is that preference model we created. And then we try to grab the key from that preference. This will then return, uh, you know, whatever's in there if we have like the post order already saved. And we only do this if the user signed in. If the user is not signed in, we check if the cookies key uh, contains the, or if the cookies contains the post order. So if we have a cookie already saved with a post order, we know that they like probably set it to newest most likely. Then we grab that from here and we return newest. Otherwise, our final statement says, all right, if we didn't find anything, we just return oldest. You could also change this to be newest if you wanted to. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. Now, all of that is taken care of. There's one final thing we have to worry about, which is we have to create a before action up here that says, if you ever visit the page and you have a params for the preference uh, present, then we want to set that. So we're creating a conditional here for our before action, uh, which calls this update preferences. 
we're going to come down here and we're going to create this update preferences method. This is going to be a little bit scary, but bear with me. The update preferences uh, has some debugging code in it. Never mind that. Uh, first thing we do is we say preference is equal to this little hash. Because we're going to be constructing this, maybe you have multiple different preferences in different areas. Uh, so we're going to try and make this a little bit modular. That this allows us to pass this entire object in to both the preference model when we call update user preferences uh, right here. And for this guest preference, we can pass in the preferences as well. So both the preference model, which might have multiple user preferences and our guest cookie preferences both take in the same thing. So they kind of look the same, but in the case of our model, it takes in the current user. And in the case of our guest, it takes in our cookies. So we have to create this still. So let's come up here. Let's right click on our uh, app. Let's say new folder, call this services. Anytime you create the services folder, you need to stop your server and then restart it just as, a, as an aside, I guess. Now let's go ahead and let's create this. We're going to call this the guest uh, preference underscore service dot RB. And in here, there's a couple things we need to do. We're going to create a class, we'll say end. First things first, for all of our keys, we're just going to create a quick little const here. We freeze it, and then we move on with our lives. Now in here, we also need to be able to update our guest preferences. So for this, we take in the cookies and the preferences, just like we talked about. I'm getting tired of saying the word preferences. We iterate through each of them. <laughs> we then say for each of these keys and values, we store the key in our cookies and we store the value. So in this case, if we take in something like the symbol post order, uh, we have the post order, which is the key. And this correlates to something like newest, right? So this is our key, this is our value. So if we search in the cookies for the post order, we'll get back the newest and then we know how to order those. Now, once we're done, we need to, let's say, uh, we're logging out, we need to delete or we're signing up, we need to delete the guest preferences. So we say preference keys dot each do key and then we delete those cookie keys. Finally, we need to check in a specific case if a key exists. So then we say, all right, if the key exists, uh, then we can return it. So we just go through our preference keys dot any key cookies key present, etc. That takes care of the service here. Next thing we want to do is come into our preference model. Now our preference model has uh, only one thing that we really need to worry about, which is going to be the update user preferences. It takes in the user and the preferences and then it calls user dot preferences dot update and then we pass in whatever came through here. We'd use the double asterisk because remember, this is coming in as an object that has like the post order set to newest or whatever, right? So we need to pass this entire thing in. So we have the double asterisk uh, being used here. In our user.rb then, we have to first of all say this has one preference and then it'll get tabbed over because my formatter hates me. Uh, and then we can say uh, self dot update user preferences takes in the user takes in the hash says user dot preference dot update preferences. So this right here calls user dot preference dot update. This right here calls user dot preference dot update. So you can see both of them do kind of the same thing, probably a sign that we should probably refactor this a little bit. Uh, but I think for the sake of this example, this is good enough. Okay, so now that we have all of that, we're done, right? Well, not really, because now we need to deal with the cases where these things could happen. In that case, we can say in our users controller, we have the registrations and the sessions. So let's start with the sessions controller. In the case of the sessions controller, the only thing we need to worry about is the create action. First thing we want to do is just log in the user like we normally would. So we're just not even going to worry about it. Then we're going to do a quick little check. We say if the resource persisted, user signed in and the guest preference service dot uh, present contained with the cookies. So if we have a cookie in here that we should be using, we're then going to go ahead and delete those cookies because we don't need to worry about these anymore. We've signed into a user. We're clearing it so that whenever the user signs out later or visits the page again, this should hopefully be taken care of. Next in our registrations controller. And again, you can change this behavior. If you don't want to do this, if you want to persist it, you just change this, this function right here. But okay. In our registrations controller, we can finish up now. Again, the only one we need to worry about is our create action here. Cause we're already hopefully deleting a lot of the, oops, a lot of the preferences. Uh, in here, we just want to say if the resource persisted, we say our preferences are equal to another hash with the post order. And this is going to have the cookies for the post order, or it's just going to be set to oldest in the case where we don't have any cookies. So 
you let's say you're you're uh, browsing the app you have your stuff set up so you're sorting by newest already and you're like wow this app's so cool i want to create an account you create an account this way if you did have it already set to newest it'll stay newest so you get to keep that user experience again you can change this if you want to and just make this a default it's just for me personally whenever an app does this i'm pleasantly surprised uh, rather than disappointed then for our resources we call resource.create preference we pass this in this will then create that model for us, the preference model and store it. And then we go ahead and we delete our preferences. So now assuming we did all of that correctly, we should be able to come in here and do a Rails S and we'll refresh to localhost port 3000. First things first, let me go ahead and full screen this. Let's change over to newest and that seems to at least be sorting. I'm gonna go ahead and clear our, uh, our parameters here. And we can see when I clear the parameters, this is still working. Let's make sure that this is actually the cookie doing this. So let's come up here, let's come into our cookies, let's remove all of these over here, hit Control Shift R again, and now we can see we're back to an ID of one. So that's good. Now I'm gonna say newest, then I'm gonna come up here and click sign up. I'm gonna do dean at example.com with a password of password. And when I log in, I expect it to still be set to newest, which it is. I can come over here and refresh and we're still good. If I sign out now, I expect it to go back to oldest, which it does. So that all seems to be working. Let's now go ahead and let's log into dnetexample.com. And remember, I was just on oldest again, so I expect to be back on newest because that was Dean's preference. If I log in, we can now see that is working as expected. So all of that seems to be fine. The final test here, of course, is to make sure that this isn't a fluke. So let's come over to like Firefox, for example. And in Firefox, we'll also log in to our application. Uh, except I think I broke localhost for my Firefox, so that's a bit of an issue. I'll go into Edge, I guess, uh, and we'll do it in there just to make sure that this is working. Let's come over to localhost port 3000. Uh, we can see oldest here, that's fine, but let's sign up or sign in as dnetexample.com with the password of password, and this is still set to newest. So there you can see this is in fact persisting exactly how you would expect it to based on how we configured it. But again, you can go through and you can change any of these settings if you would like to. But that's going to do it for me. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Hopefully you, uh, you know, got something out of it. Remember, if your services folder isn't working, uh, restart your server. That's like nine times out of 10 what the problem is. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.